So I'm going to talk a little bit about being a community leader, but about three things one needs to have to be in order to be a great leader in your community or globally. As we think about being a community leader, your audience is your population that you're working with. And the question becomes, what do you, as the leader, want to bring to the group that you're working with? And unless you start to look at what you have on you, be it your baggage, be it your story, be it your history, you might not be as good of a leader. So the three things that we're going to talk about will help make you a better leader in life. In order to do that, you have to get to the edge of your comfort zone. Not outside that ring, but inside your comfort zone, learning more about yourself. In order to do that, you have to think about your bias. We all have it. We all have unconscious bias within us. Think about the conversations you had with your parents at the dining room table. Who were the people you were talking about? How were you talking about them? How were your parents or your grandparents or your relatives having these conversations? How did they talk about women? How did they talk about our LGBTQ community? How did they talk about senior citizens? How did they talk about veterans? How did they talk about race and politics? All of that affects your consciousness and sits in the back of your unconscious bias. Even though we're adults, it's still there. Taking the time to recognize that you have these bias actually gets you to the edge of your comfort zone because you have to begin to think about what those are. Could it be that you have a bias against bigger people, or for me, taller people? <laughs> Do you have a bias against a certain group or a population? If you travel, do you have bias already set up about the place that you're going, be it Europe, be it France, be it South America, be it Africa? We all have unconscious bias. And the only way you can overcome yours is number one, to take that step and say, Yep, I think I do have a bias about this particular group. Because if, as, as a community leader, you want to be strong and powerful, and you haven't taken a look at your bias, folks are going to pick it up. They're going to know. Just walking through a community, this is a lovely college, just walking through the college community, and you see a janitor, did you say hello? If you see the president, did you say hello? There's a bias there that you don't even recognize. Unconscious bias is part of our being. And we have to stop and say, yes, I have bias. And I'm going to try my best to address it and then figure out a way to overcome it. It's there naturally. It's learned. And like all preconceived notions about people, it can be unlearned. Second thing you really need to think about when you're working with a group of people, your cultural awareness. How aware are you of different cultures? Where are you on that ladder of being proficient at learning and wanting to learn about cultures? I always say I'm not at the top of cultural awareness. I've never been to the continent of Africa. I can't wait to go because I want to learn about the different cultures in the countries in Africa. And if you don't take the time to learn about the culture, you actually might do harm. Be it that you're working with children, and you don't even understand the culture of the children. They may love to get along and play. You haven't even watched to see whether or not there's a little bit of bullying going on, or the child that's silent. 
You might work with senior citizens and not realize that they actually have their own culture. They know that someone is the dancer in that group. They know that someone is the curmudgeon in that group. And they know how to work with each other. If you're walking in wanting to help the senior citizens, you have to first get to learn that culture. And if you think you're here and they're here, you're not going to work on an equal plane. What if you're working with veterans? Well, different vets are different from where they did their work. If you're a vet from the Vietnam era, your whole style and personality and thinking about government and relations and people, very different than if you're working with a vet that did the Korean War. Or you're working with a vet that did the, the Saudi Arabia Desert Storm. So you have to really get to know that culture. And the only way you're really going to do it is by listening first. We do that when we start a new job. We go on these listening tours. Listen first. Ask the good questions. Walking in and saying, this is what I think we need to do, is not helpful if you haven't heard what the people actually need. It's like going into a impoverished country and building that school and being so proud of it and coming back a year later and it's brick and mortar because what they really needed were the books not the building. If you had stopped and listened to that group, you would have been more culturally aware of what's going on. And the last piece that you really need to think about, and it's the hardest one for all of us, is to leave your ego at the door. And I say leave your ego because you have to take the time to say to yourself, I'm seeing a problem here. I want to help that problem. I want to help these people resolve that problem. If you walk in thinking you're going to be the savior, everybody in that room will know that's what you want to be. And they might pat you on the back, and you might think you did a great job. And as you walk out the door, they're saying, OK, now let's get to the real work. Checking your ego at the door means taking a look at where you are in status, OK? We're all privileged. Anybody who has a high school education is privileged over the person who doesn't have a high school education. Everybody that hits college or does a tech school, that's a privilege. They know something. They have a skill. I know we talk about white privilege, but we all have privilege. It's what you do with that privilege. And if you think that you're high up on the steps of privilege, then you're not going to be working with the people who are your equals. Because you're not saying that you are an equal. So check your ego at the door. Now these are all hard and difficult concepts. But unless we begin to say to ourselves, I have got to take a look at me before I become that strong community leader with a lot of good folks working equal with me. If we don't stop and take a look at what is my unconscious bias, it's there, I know it. I remember at the dinner table. I remember at the family reunions. I remember who cousins got shunned or talked about. If we don't take a look at that, if we don't take a look at how really are we of we have culture, culture that is not of our own, culture of the other, the religious culture, their spiritual culture that's in, in the particular group, the age, whatever that may be of that culture, and you don't take the time to learn and to listen, you will not be as strong of a leader. And finally, if you remember to leave that ego at the door and want to work with people equally and be the listener and then help working with them come to figure out what the issues are and the solution to the problem, if you're that kind of leader, 
you will go and be stronger. You will be stronger because they will be with you, not you will be above them. 